guns in America. A semi-automatic rifle like this, the bullet travels three times the speed of a handgun. A series of mass shootings reigniting a decades-old debate about the right to bear arms. It uh, was thought originally that it involved only the militia. Now, politicians, gun owners, and those affected by gun violence are calling for different solutions. But what are the facts? Tonight, a look at the statistics of shootings. More than 80% of the time, the shooters declare their intention in advance. The laws put in place to prevent tragedy. First off, you got to have Calhoun driver's license. Then you have to have a firearm safety card. And the complicated history behind it all. This is Guns in America, a KTVU special report. And thank you for joining us for this KTVU special report. I'm Frank Somerville. And I'm Aliana Gomez. Tonight we're going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about guns in our communities. We're not here to debate gun ownership. We're here to present the facts and the impact that guns, specifically military-style weapons, have on our society. Yes, we're here in the Bay Area, and yes, by most accounts, a majority of people here support stricter gun laws. But we also know that some of you watching right now are responsible gun owners and that you're also looking for solutions. Tonight, we're not talking with politicians or advocates. Tonight, we'll be looking at research and data to give you a better understanding of the issues at hand. And we want to begin with what's considered to be a mass shooting and the statistics that are often shared in news reports. What qualifies as a mass shooting depends on who you ask because there's no standard definition of the term. The most often cited source in the media is the crowdsource website MassShootingTracker.org. Volunteers help track data through news reports. It considers a mass shooting an event when four or more people are shot, even if no one dies. So using that data, there have been 297 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. And that's the number you've been hearing a lot the past week. But if you use the FBI definition of a mass murder, which is when four or more people are killed, that same data shows 26 incidents so far this year, and that's a much smaller number than 297, but still 26 mass murders is too many. In those shootings, 147 people were killed and 85 others were injured. Now, a lot of different guns were used in those shootings, but it's the military style semi-automatic rifle that often grabs the headlines because it can do so much damage in so little time. Tonight, Christina Rendon takes a closer look at the most popular model, the AR-15. It's a gun that you can still buy in California, despite our state having some of the strictest gun laws anywhere in the country. Works pretty good. Works pretty good. The AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, lightweight and customizable. The NRA says it's the most popular rifle in the United States, with more than 50 million in circulation. Although most mass shootings actually involve handguns, the AR-15 has gained notoriety because it was used in some of the deadliest mass murders in America. The shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary, the San Bernardino attack, the Las Vegas massacre, and the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. The AR-15 is a semi-automatic rifle, meaning it automatically reloads bullets, but only fires once with each trigger pull. Wow. That's loud. Fully automatic weapons or machine guns fire continuously when the trigger is held down. They've been strictly regulated since 1934 and no new machine guns can be made or sold to civilians. But AR-15s can be modified with so-called bump stocks to make them automatic. So this is your bump fire stock. For those of you who haven't seen it, that slides back and forth like this. You will put your finger through the trigger and put it here and then you push forward and so the, the the recoil action of the gun should cause it to simulate full auto fire so that's what we're going to try to do like i said it's my first time we'll see how easy it is fairly easy bump stocks were banned by the federal government in 2017 after the las vegas massacre the gunmen used them to turn 12 rifles into machine guns even without automatic capabilities, surgeons say the AR-15 is so deadly because it shoots small, high-velocity rounds that cause serious damage, shattering inside victims' bodies and leaving gaping wounds. 
semi-automatic rifle like this, the bullet travels three times the speed of a handgun. When it enters the body, it does something called cavitate. It creates a large path. Give you an idea, if it goes through a bone, the bone pulverizes, whereas a handgun would lodge in the bone. If it goes through the liver, it turns the liver to jelly. If it goes through this path, the path itself sends a ripple effect. The ripple effect will damage blood vessels. That's why you need multiple operations to stabilize patients. Exit wound, we're talking about the size of an orange. Most AR-15s are sold with 30 round magazines, which takes about three seconds to unload. But you can also easily find a magazine that holds more than three times that. The AR-15 is also affordable. We found them as cheap as $250 online, but they more commonly sell for about $1,000. You can legally own an AR-15 in California, but certain features are banned, making it slower to reload. The magazine has to be permanently fixed so it can't be swapped out quickly, and it can only hold 10 bullets. The rifle also can't have a pistol grip that a shooter could wrap their hand around. Ironically, these new rules breathe new life into California gun sales. Gun makers adapted and sold conversion kits to rifle owners who wanted to keep their weapons and still follow the letter of the law. The gunman in Dayton, Ohio, also modified his gun to make it more powerful. And even though police killed him in 30 seconds, it was still too late. We want to take a moment now to show you what 30 seconds feels like. For the people in Dayton, it probably felt like an eternity. Those were pictures of the nine people who were killed in Dayton. Another 14 were wounded. Damage all done in 30 seconds by a gun that was bought and modified legally. So we all know the guns are out there, but just how easy are they to purchase here in California? We send KTVU's Candace Wynn to a gun store in Dublin to go through the process of buying a gun. Candace. California has some of the strictest gun laws in the country, and while most gun owners are buying their firearms legally, we found a surprisingly high number of people slip through the cracks. While some Californians buy guns at pawn shops and gun shows, most of them, or about 80%, buy firearms at gun and sporting goods stores. Stores like guns, fishing, and other stuff in Dublin. So I've never bought a gun before. I'm 21 and over. I don't have a criminal record. What's the process of buying a gun? Okay, first off, you got to have a cowboy driver's license. Then you have to have a firearm safety card. It's a card you get after passing a 30-question test. It's really common sense questions is all it is. Questions like, which way should you point your gun? Or is it important to teach children guns aren't toys? The test is administered at the store. The results go straight to the state. I've had one person fail it and he got mad because he failed it. After passing, you can start picking. Gun, what gun would you like? Never anything good follows that much. So what's next? I like this gun. Okay. I pass that You pass test. your test and we go down here. First question is, have you ever been convicted of a felony? No. You currently a subject of any restraining orders? No. Okay. The seller sends your basic information to the Department of Justice, where the state processes the full background check. So if all those checks were passed and I have all my documents, the soonest I could go home with this shotgun would be 10 days. Because California has a mandatory 10-day waiting period. States like Nevada and Arizona do not. While they allow their local residents to purchase assault-style rifles if they're 18 and older, in California, you have to be at least 21 to buy any firearm. Oh, oh they shoot it. July's Garlic Festival shooting highlighted California's problem with gun buyers heading to surrounding states with laxer gun laws. Police say the 19-year-old shooter had an apartment in Nevada and purchased his AK-style rifle there before returning to Gilroy. At his age alone, he wouldn't have been able to buy it at your store. No. There is no accurate count of how many guns come in and out of California. But for an idea, out of the thousands of California guns ATF agents traced in 2017, less than 10% of them came from Arizona or Nevada. 
By far, most of the guns agents traced were purchased in California. Dr. Nicole kravitz wurtz with UC Davis says California gun buyers still find loopholes. About one in five purchases, um, around 17 percent actually, um, did not undergo a background check um, when they purchased their most recent firearm. This is particularly true, she says, when a family member gives away a firearm or it's illegally sold. So if you have the cash, you can just... Take it and go. You take it and go. We do see that uh, some folks are falling through the cracks. Researchers say there are roughly 20 million guns across the state. California's favorite firearm, the handgun, with the rifle coming in at second. Okay, so bottom line here, when, when you're in a store, from start to finish, how long does it take to buy a gun? So let's say you studied for that certification test. Let's say you know exactly what kind of gun you want. It could take an hour, less than maybe even half hour. But then there's still the waiting period. Correct? Exactly. You have to remember, even though you bought it and it's being stored at that store, you need to wait 10 days before you can eat, before you can actually bring that firearm home. Oh. All right. Candace Wynn, thank you so much. All right. So what does it take to buy a gun in another country? We're going to take Canada, for example, here. To buy a handgun there, you need to pass a mandatory safety course that includes 10 hours of classroom instruction. You also have to pass a written and hands-on practical exam, and only then can you apply for a license. You also need to get your spouse to sign off on the application and provide two character references. Step number three, pass the background check. And besides your criminal history, authorities also look at your mental health and whether you have a history of domestic violence. Then there's a mandatory 28-day waiting period. If you're approved, you can buy a gun and register it with authorities, and you'll automatically go through daily background checks. Well, there is also an entire world of so-called ghost guns that are impossible to track. They're made with unfinished parts, which can be bought and sold legally. Now, the part of a gun that makes it a gun is this part called a receiver. It's where you usually find the serial number and manufacturer's name. But unfinished receivers, which don't have the necessary holes drilled into them, aren't technically considered firearms. People can buy them legally without background checks or any sales records. The ATF estimates there are thousands of ghost guns in the U.S., but the exact number is unknown. So is it easy access to guns or a mental health crisis or something else entirely? Coming up, we look at the growing debate over what's really to blame for mass shootings and what researchers have discovered. We really need to stop blaming gun violence on mental illness. Plus the right to keep and bear arms, but for who? We go over the Second Amendment with an expert in constitutional law. Welcome back to this KTVU special report. The debate over the Second Amendment is always a heated topic. And Google searches for Second Amendment tend to spike after mass shootings. Just take a look at the past three years. In June of 2016, there was a spike on the day of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. Two months later, another spike when then-candidate Donald Trump told gun supporters they may want to do something about Hillary Clinton. The following year, people were once again searching for the Second Amendment after the Las Vegas massacre. The next spike was in February of 2018 after the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. It's likely that the shootings this past weekend have people once again searching for information about the Second Amendment. So what does the Second Amendment say exactly, and why are people divided over its meaning? In full, on the Bill of Rights, it reads, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. As KTVU's Alex Savage tells us, the debate comes from how you choose to interpret those words. Even constitutional law experts agree the Second Amendment isn't cut and dry. It's a very complicated situation. A lot of it depends you know, on what you think ought to be right. UC Berkeley professor of law emeritus Jesse Choper says the debate over what the founding fathers meant comes down to who the amendment applies to. It uh, was thought originally that it involved only the militia, but its historic meaning uh, up to the present uh, time is a government-authorized military operation. 
But many argued the right to keep and bear arms applies to everyone, not just the military or law enforcement. So in 2008, the Supreme Court took up a case out of Washington, D.C., and in a split five to four vote, ruled that the Second Amendment does protect an individual's right to possess a firearm. And it seemed to say uh, that it's, uh, you have the right to bear arms only uh, in your own home to protect your your property and your families. But the ruling was limited. It didn't address having a gun outside of the home or what kind of gun you can own. That's unclear as yet. And uh, that's a, the sort of thing that they're gonna have to decide pretty soon. Uh, uh, whether, whether you need one of those guns. Also unclear is whether accessories like gun magazines are also protected under the Second Amendment. Just this year, a federal judge struck down a California law banning high-capacity magazines, saying the ban violated the Second Amendment. The ruling is now being challenged by the state. The National Rifle Association is one group that absolutely believes in the Second Amendment. Just this week, the NRA posted this tweet saying, quote, we use firearms every day to protect ourselves, our families and communities, and no one will take that away from us. The NRA may be standing by the Second Amendment, but the Constitution can and has been changed in the past. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery. The 21st Amendment abolished prohibition. But there's also the 23rd Amendment that gave people living in Washington, D.C. the right to vote for president. That was in 1961. Then in 1971, the 26th Amendment changed the voting age to 18. In total, there have been 27 amendments to the U.S. Constitution, and there will likely be more in the future. Most often, a new amendment is ratified after approval by two-thirds of the House and the Senate and the support of at least 38 states. Well, right now, lawmakers in D.C. can't even agree on background checks, let alone a new constitutional amendment. The closest Congress is getting to taking action is the possible passage of a so-called red flag bill. It would encourage states to adopt laws that would allow authorities to take guns away from people believed to be a danger to themselves or others. California and 16 other states and D.C. have similar laws. The federal proposal wouldn't force states to enact laws, but would hold back grant money if they didn't take action. And some of the most significant legislation was passed decades ago. The Brady Bill passed in 1993. It requires background checks and a five-day waiting period when you buy a gun from a licensed dealer. But it doesn't cover weapons purchased at gun shows or between individual sellers. In 1994, the crime bill included a provision that banned certain types of semi-automatic weapons. President Bill Clinton signed the legislation in a large ceremony on the White House lawn. But the assault weapon ban had a sunset clause and expired in 2004. Since then, lawmakers haven't been able to take action. In 2015, the Manchin Toomey bill failed. It would have required background checks at gun shows and online. A year later, the Murphy Amendment on expanded background checks also failed. Even Dianne Feinstein's proposal to stop people on terrorist watch lists from obtaining guns couldn't get through. Right now, there are two bills in front of lawmakers that would expand background checks. Both H.R. 8 and H.R. 11 to 12 have passed the House, but the Senate hasn't taken any action. Many Republican lawmakers are pointing to mental illness as the problem, not guns. So we looked at a variety of national polls and we found that a majority of Americans tend to agree. For example, in a poll by the Washington Post that was taken just last year, 77% of people said they think more effective mental health treatment could have prevented the school shooting in Parkland, Florida. And that poll included people of all political affiliations. But statistically, people who are mentally ill are actually more of a danger to themselves than others. Two Investigates Brooks DeRose has been digging through the research and joins us now with the facts. Brooks. Well, if you think about it, every time there's a mass shooting, we often believe that that person must be mentally ill, especially if they're willing to kill so many innocent people. But bear with me because we drilled down to just the facts about those diagnosed with a mental illness. And believe it or not, research shows there is almost no link between mental illness and gun violence. Instead, relationships with your partner, your boss, or a traumatic event can be much more likely of a trigger. 
It's a narrative playing out in public. Deadly shootings in Ohio and Texas. The media and politics. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. But the perception that mental illness is the cause of mass shootings is flawed. A 2019 University of Texas study that started nearly a decade ago shows mental health symptoms rarely lead to gun violence. Things like depression, anxiety, ADHD, they have absolutely zero connection to, uh, to violence. And so when we start making these sweeping generalization that mental illness is related to mass shootings, we're doing a disfavor to a large percentage of Americans who are mentally ill. Jeff Temple did the research and says only 4% of violent crime in the U.S. is committed by those suffering from a mental illness. He says they're much more likely to hurt themselves. In fact, statistics show two thirds of all gun related deaths are suicide. In reality, it's access to guns. It is across the board, it's access to guns. If we look at mental health in other peer countries, it's the same rates, the same care, uh, but they don't have any gun violence and because they don't have guns. California is one of 17 states with a red flag law. Police and family members can ask a judge to prevent a person from having or getting a gun. If the judge agrees the person is a threat to themselves or others, the order is issued and the guns will quickly be seized. It can last for up to a year. More than 80% of the time, the shooters declare their intention in advance. There's actually an opportunity to intervene and prevent the event from happening in the first place. Dr. Garen Wintemute has been studying gun violence for nearly four decades at UC Davis. He agrees mental health is not a major cause. Instead, he points to being male, facing rejection, or suffering recent trauma as common denominators. It goes way up if there is also alcohol abuse or drug abuse or a prior history of violence. Those things are risk factors in the general population, not just among people with mental illness. Several studies show interpersonal relationships can be directly linked to gun violence, like an employee who's angry at their boss, a man who's mad at his cheating wife, or a teen who complains about girls not liking him, like this college student from Santa Barbara. I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires. He went on a shooting rampage and stabbing spree in 2014, killing six and wounding 13. Family members saw the warning signs but couldn't legally do anything. It prompted California's red flag law in 2016. The most recent data shows over three years since then, more than 400 gun violence restraining orders were issued when warning signs were seen. But health professionals argue more needs to happen. For the first time, Everybody in the country is starting to see this as a problem that affects them personally. And if it's my problem, I'm gonna be willing to be part of the solution. So I think in the coming years, we're going to see some real change of a kind we've been hoping for for decades. And there has been some progress in California. Now anyone convicted of domestic violence, meaning a misdemeanor, is banned from owning a gun. But there's still more work to do. Convicted drunk drivers can still buy firearms here. It's controversial, but researchers say taking away guns from anyone with a DUI will actually reduce gun violence. So, Brooks, what you're saying is just because you show violent behavior right. doesn't mean that you're mentally ill. That's what researchers are saying, and they're also saying that if you stigmatize mental illness, it'll make people who actually have some symptoms of a mental illness, they'll be afraid to go and get help. Interesting. Yeah. Brooks, thank you. You're welcome. Well, this type of research is fairly new. Back in 1996, legislation forced the Centers for Disease Control to stop funding research on gun violence. Last year, a bill signed by President Trump allows the CDC to research gun violence as long as the money isn't used to advocate for gun control. But the money for the research still isn't there. The good news is, though, other funding has risen dramatically. The foundation Arnold Ventures recently announced it would spend $20 million to fund research grants, and many states, including California, are spending millions on gun violence research. So what's next? 
We here at KTVU will continue to report on developments involving gun laws. We'll also put all of the information we've gathered here tonight on our website, KTVU.com. Just go to the Guns in America story on your main page. You'll find links to studies that we referenced tonight, as well as other resources and media reports. There's also a section showing the different laws that have been passed over the years. And finally, we put links up to show you how to find your federal lawmakers on the site and how to contact them. You voted them into office. They work for you. So tell them how you feel. Up next on the 11 o'clock news, a frightening ordeal for a family in the South Bay. They share video of an intruder inside their home stealing items while they were there.